Hello everyone, my name is Putty and welcome back for another edition of Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. We are here for the 8th annual edition of the most prestigious tag team tournament in in American territorial wrestling today. We are here for, of course, the Sam Keith Classic A4 Team Round Robin Invitational Tournament. The, uh, the winners of which include uh, the Ring Generals, Casey Glenn and, and many other legends of the business that have won this tournament and gone on to do great great things of course last year's winners uh, were the aces of mayhem cementing themselves as one of the greatest tag teams in the history of mid-atlantic wrestling and even the entire independent scene they went on to a, t- a championship match a, uh, a wonderful ladder match at where it all begins again but who are our teams this year i have not even announced any teams that were going to be in this tournament before we uh, we came to this show. Usually, there's at least one or two teams that throw their names in the ring. But uh, of course, the tag team scene is very different this year than it was last year. Last year, you had the very uh, uh, what's the word? The very loud characters of Sid Collier and Cameron Jones, who uh, were very quick to tell people that this was going to be their apex. This was going to be their big uh, show that they were going to prove to everyone that they were the best. And obviously, the Aces of Mayhem took umbrage with that in this tournament acted as kind of a framing device for those two teams to really duke it out in a, in a more long-term feud. Similarly, the tournament before that was probably a staging point for the Ring Generals and the Dynamite Express to have their conflict come to a head within a within a structure of some sort. This year is very different, and I think that provides a very good opportunity. doesn't mean everyone in this tournament is going to be young, young guns or anything like that, but uh, it possibly means there's more opportunity out there than, than most years. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is that... Um, Americana, the team of Eric Lee and American Elemental, were supposed to be in this tournament. They announced their entrance a couple of weeks ago on the Mid-Atlantic website. However, during the last show, Kamikaze and American Elemental had a wonderfully brutal match. It was violent, it was extreme, there were many, many spots which could have taken years off of either guy's career. Uh, Luckily, that didn't happen. Neither of them are seriously hurt. However... American Elemental did suffer a niggling little injury that he thought he could work through, and uh, he spent some time over the last couple of weeks working in other companies, and sadly, on one of those dates, he tweaked his leg. And uh, so he is not out full-time or anything like that. He'll probably actually make it back for uh, the August show, but he's unable to compete in this tournament, which is very sad for, I'm sure, Eric Lee and America and... American Elemental, Americana is the tag team name. Probably should, I thought that was a good tag team name, but I'm getting so confused, I'm thinking of changing it. Um, but I won't. Um, but yeah, aside from that, uh, our entrance in the 2018 Sam Keith Classic, the eighth one are as follows. Devil May Care, the team of Acid and Stuntman. Notorious, the masters of the Coastal Zone tag team match, Miguel Rivera and Carlos something or other. <laughs> Carlos and Miguel, okay? The ring generals, Dean Waldorf, deadly Dean Waldorf, and marvelous Marv Stadler, and the all-star team of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Heavyweight Champion, Apollo, uh, Island Boy Apollo, and the heavyweight champion of the world, Yo- uh, Ernest Youngman. Why am I just saying Youngman? <laughs> okay, yes, Ernest Youngman. All-star tag team there in our, uh, uh, to be competing in this tournament, as well as uh, three of MAW's best, with the ring generals, of course, being our local tag team champions. We are in the Mechon Auditorium. We are here in front of a packed 800 crowd. And as usual, let's get right into tournament play as we open up the show with a 67C plus and about good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Ernest Youngman and Island Boy Apollo get points on the board by defeating the ring generals in 17 minutes. When Ernest Youngman defeated Dean Waldorf by submission with a cross-face check and wang. And Ernest Youngman carried the match. A very good match between these guys. The all-star team of uh, Ernest Youngman and Island by Apollo. You know, you you have the ring generals who are just a well-oiled machine. And you've got someone like Deadly Dean. Who can work someone down. Who can grind the matches to a halt. And really control tempo. So the the all-star team definitely had a rough time with this. Um, But in the end, Ernest Youngman is on such a roll right now. You know, ever since he left Mall for a bit of a journey... He, uh, he ended up defeating so many people across the territories, winning the heavyweights championship of the world, um, and came back here and is so confident, is so on top of his game right now, and he manages to go toe-to-toe with Dean from a technical perspective, counter-for-counter, counter, fast-paced, quick grappling, and in the end, Ernest manages to uh, lock in that cross-face chicken wing to get the points on the board for the All-Stars. As we move into our second first-round match between... Um, 
between Notorious and Devil May Care. And your 40D minus Notorious defeat Devil May Care when Miguel Rivera defeated Acid by pinfall with a shot in the dark. Match got the crowd hotter. A hot, exciting match between um, two exciting teams for sure. Notorious, obviously, uh, vets of the Coastal Zone style, the fast paced, wow action, adrenaline rush stuff you'd see from a fast paced independent like that. You see some Hurricane Runners on the outside, and any brawling that happens, because this probably does devolve into a slugfest at some point. It's just it's quick paced. There's some charisma involved. They're getting the crowd involved. But of course, Devil May Care with that reckless attitude, just throwing their bodies, uh, throwing their bodies at their opponent, and just uh, clearing house, just absolutely destroying uh, their bodies and their opponents' bodies. And it's just a crazy fast-paced match, very short. And in the end, Miguel Rivera just catches Acid too on one of those high-risk maneuvers and. That's all it takes when when you're pulling off those high risk maneuvers. All it takes is a, is is one mistake and it's game over. So let's take a look at the bracket at the end of the first round with Notorious and the All Stars getting on the board with two points each. And Devil May Care and the Ring Generals falling a little bit behind. We're still early days. Not much you can tell from these first round results. Of course, there are going to be three rounds as usual, um, but uh, good showings from the Coastal Zone Tag Team Masters and the all-star team of our local heavyweight champion and the world's heavyweight champion. Good stuff. We move into our first break of the evening, and in the interview area, um, the Dynamite Express are being interviewed by Sweet Tabitha, and uh, she says, Hey, you, you guys, I wanted, to, I wanted to get your thoughts on who you thought would win tonight, and I was also interested in, uh, in whether you guys missed this. You know, you guys never got to win this tournament, and uh, I was wondering if that, that still sticks in your mind. Sid and Cameron, they look at each other, and Cameron picks up the mic, and he says, you know, I, I've been watching this tournament, and, and I've seen some impressive performances, and I think, you know, they may have lost in the last round, but I think the Ring Generals uh, are the best tag team I've ever been in the ring with, and so I would expect them to go all the way. Sid takes the mic off of Cameron and says, uh, as for if we miss this, well, you know, it's a bit of a shame that we never got to win this tournament, but it doesn't diminish the reins and the the history of the Dynamo Express any any further. We are still the greatest tag team in the history of Mid Atlantic Wrestling. And we we you know, we're not thinking about being a tag team anymore. You know, we're still good friends and we're still gonna support each other, but it's time to move on and over the next two months we're both gonna get championship opportunities. And that's what we're focused on right now. And we move into the second round matches. As in a fifty two D plus the Ring Generals the uh, defeat notorious when uh, Dean Waldorf once again works down Carlos Barrada with a uh, okay with a wheelbarrow bomb their tag team finishing maneuver just that well oiled ring general machine this is the same result we got a couple months ago when these two faced off for the Mid Atlantic Regional Tag Team Championships uh, marvelous Marv I think I think we we'll give it I think this match is probably a marvelous Marv shine match you know notorious and uh, Sorry, not Notorious, but Carlos and, and, and Miguel uh, try and work that fast-paced style. It's only the second run. They can probably try and do it. They're just trying to uh, you know, keep the pace really high, keep the pace really high octane, and make sure that Dean never gets comfortable. And that's something Dean is diff- finds very difficult to deal with. So I'm sure that um, in the end it falls to Marv, who can always roll with that fast pace, that high octane pace. He can just catch people with his with his quick throws and his... Uh, quick thinking, a really uh, good athlete is Marv, Marv Stadler, and sometimes he doesn't have those technical basics that that Deadly Dean can employ. But he's he's really quick on his feet. He's got the mind to uh, to roll with the punches, and I'm sure he switches the tempo back around, and he can he can roll with the best of them when it comes to a fast paced coastal zone style match. And in the end, Dean Dean picks up the victory after I'm sure Marv did most of the most of the work in this match. But that's fine. Dean does a lot of the work in the more comfortable matches that are that are able to be won from a tempo perspective, whereas Marv is that backup where if they don't set the tempo that they like, then Marv can still roll with that high octane pressure. And we move into our next second round match as uh, in a fifty five C minus Devil May Care, who defeated the All Stars Ernest Youngman and Island Boy Apollo, and Acid defeated Island Boy Apollo with a jump of the shark. Ooh, Ernest Young one carrying the match again, but wow, what a victory for this young upstart tag team Devil May Care. Managing to pick up a victory over the all-star tag team of the World's Heavyweight Champion and the Mid-Atlantic Regional Champion. What does that leave our bracket looking like? 
Yes, indeed. It is all even. There is one victory and one defeat for all of the tag teams thus far in this tournament. This has happened a couple times in the past, and it just leaves the field wide open. Anyone could win from here. We really don't know. So uh, I guess we just got to find out. And we move into our second break of the evening. And Acid and Stuntman, after their victory, they, they go over to Sweet Tabitha. And Acid picks up the mic and he says, You know, we are a young tag team. We like to throw our bodies on the line. We like to put everything we've got on the line because we believe we've got nothing to lose. And we got and we like to look back at the end of our wrestling career and say that we have, we have got no regrets. Because we did everything in our power to make sure that everybody knew that we were the best. Tonight, I think we've proved that. And we're going to keep proving that every day. But there's one thing I wanted to mention. It's Kamikaze. We needed to give a big thank you to Kamikaze because one of the people that we have struggled with the most on the independent scene this year has been Eric Lee and American Elemental. So thank you very much for keeping him out of that out of this tournament, Kamikaze. Big thanks to you. We appreciate it. So, uh, yep, Devil May Care are <laughs> throwing a... Thank you out to Kami, whether he wants it or not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. As we move into our final round of the Sam Keith Classic 8. Anything could happen. Wins and losses mean a lot here. And in the first matchup of the round in a 60C and a decent match, Ernest Youngman and Island Boy Apollo do indeed defeat Notorious when Ernest Youngman defeated Miguel Riviera by submission with a cross-face chicken wing. So, Ernest Youngman and Island Boy go to four points, which means that because Ernest Youngman and Island Boy Apollo did defeat the Ring Generals in the first round, the Ring Generals are out of the tournament. So, it all lays on this final match. If Devil May Care win against the Ring Generals, they win the Sam Keith Classic. If they lose or draw, Ernest Youngman and Island Boy Apollo are, uh, are the winners of the tournament. So, let's find out who won. The, the Sam Keith Classic 2018. In a 62C main event of the evening, living up to the hype, Devil May Care defeat the Mid-Atlantic Regional Tag Team Champions when Acid defeated Dean Waldorf by a pinfall where they jump the shark. Acid and Stuntman win the Sam Keith Classic 2018. The 8th annual edition of the Tag Team Tournament. They are the most prestigious champions, tournament champions in independent tag team wrestling today and they have pinned the regional tag team champions which is a huge huge deal great stuff fantastic debut year for them in maw continues just uh another i think i like to think this is like i like to think devil may care like were clever about the pacing of this match like they started off really quick they started off with their high octane stuff and they try and rattle dean's cage and they managed to do it they get marv in there marv works those throws marv tries to keep up with that fast pace and of course devil may care are bringing a whole new level of fast pace to maw like we're not just talking about say american elemental or cheetah boy who do a lot of fast pace moves and you know keep keep the tempo high these guys just throw themselves they use their bodies as weapons they don't give a shit their bodies are just dis um disposable their bodies are disposable you know they don't give a shit they, they can sacrifice body parts they'll sacrifice years off their career to win and you know, that that might be something Marv can't quite keep up with, but he, he might just manage it. He might be like, okay, I can I can just about handle this tempo. And he keeps up and he keeps up and he manages to, to, to do it, you know, put a good show on and, and do himself some justice. But then Acid, out of nowhere, just pulls out these technical skills. Um, Acid starts viciously grinding out at Marv's left leg. And just just kicking and 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 uh, locking him in st uh, stretch holds and all this uh, all this stuff from acid quick tags between the two as a stuntman with this fast pace you know drop kicks and uh, top rope maneuvers and then acid every time he gets in he's just working these nasty dirty gritty holds and every time Dean manages to tie and they switch back to stuntman and stuntman just does something crazy um, like I don't know was it stuntman yeah who took the uh it was Acid who took the stunt bump, uh, where he just goes through, like, five tables for some reason. 
He just does it. Like, it, it, Stuntman's in the ring working with Dean, and Acid sets up, like, five tables and just falls through them. Just like, fuck it. <laughs> I don't give a shit. He gets back in the ring. Uh, but yeah, Acid with... I think Acid was the star of this one. It was, you know, Stuntman helped to fuck up the ring generals with their pacing, but Acid showed a whole nother level of technical skills we didn't know he had and managed to just completely mess with the ring generals' heads tonight. Um... It wasn't one-sided by any means, but Devil May Care's strategy worked, that's for sure. And they're not crazy. You might you might think with their with their Devil May Care attitude and their uh their reckless abandon during their matches that they're they're crazy or they're stupid. They're not. This match showed they are very clever tag team wrestlers. Um they just don't give a shit. And in a rare appearance from Sam Keith, he comes out and awards the Sam Keith Classic Championship um trophies to the winners, the eighth champions of the tag team division here in maw or the tag team tournament division here in maw the commissioner of the confederation of the territories sam keith makes an appearance here in his uh his his home promotion of maw um to crown the champions and that's it i hope you guys enjoyed oh this was this might be the best show we've ever run on numbers wise uh, let me know if you agree in the comments and i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a thumbs up check out the series subscribe if you haven't already um, if you're feeling especially generous and particularly like the show, like the game did, go ahead and check out my Patreon link is in the description. If you want to create input on the series or you want to yell at me for hating uh, Pittsburgh Steel, go ahead and check out my Twitter. Link to that is also in the description. Next episode, Cameron Jones takes on Alan Boy Apollo, and Ernest Youngman has said that if if Puerto Rican Power wants his rematch, it's next month at Battle of the Mid Atlantic in August. And also, Scythe is back, and you can be damn sure there are going to be consequences for his defeat the last time we saw him so join me next time for that i hope you do and if you do i will see you guys then thank you so much for watching peace out